All right, guys, let's tackle our second lesson in this unit on circles. Uh, this lesson is going to be about central angles and arcs. Um, we're going to be able to, when we're done this lesson, be able to identify central angles, major arcs, minor arcs, and semicircles, and find their measures, and find the lengths of arcs as well. All right, let's start with some new vocabulary here. Um, first of all, central angle. This is an angle within a circle that has its vertex at the center. So I'm going to draw an example here. Here's my circle. There's my center. And if I just were to draw two radii, they form an angle. In this angle here, I'll call it angle one, we would call a central angle because its vertex is at the center of the circle. We'll talk more about inscribed angles in a future lesson where we're dealing with angles inside the circle where the vertex isn't at the center. But for this lesson, we're going to be talking about central angles. And next word is, uh, next piece of vocabulary is arc, which is just a portion of a circle. So for instance, when we draw the central angle, I could take these endpoints, let's call these A and B, and they create this portion of a circle, and we would call that an arc. <clears throat> now, you could have two different types, or really three different types of arcs in a circle. A minor arc is the shortest arc connecting two points on a circle. So for instance, here, if I said arc AB, if I wanted to talk about the minor arc, I'd be talking about this piece right here. So I'll just highlight that. There's our minor arc right there. And we could also have a major arc, which would be the longest arc connecting those two points. So if I came all the way around the circle like this, then I'd have a major arc. Now, if I happen to have, if I were to extend this, this side of this angle directly across the triangle to point C, well, that would make C be a diameter, okay? And then if I were to connect C and B, I'll do that in orange. That would make that a semicircle. So a semicircle is an arc whose endpoints are on a diameter. Congruent arcs, just like uh, line segments and angles, we can have congruent arcs. And these are arcs that are either in the same circle or in congruent circles that have the same measure. So they're going to have the same radius, the same angular measure, and the same length along the arc. Adjacent arcs are kind of like adjacent angles. You remember we had adjacent angles here. I could say these two angles are adjacent. They share a vertex and a side. Well, I could have adjacent angles here. Minor arc CA and minor arc AB would be adjacent arcs. Um, so they are they're next to each other. They share an endpoint. And the last new piece of vocabulary is going to be arc length. The distance between the starting and ending points of an arc as measured along the arc. In other words, if I were to stand on this arc and I walked along that arc, what distance did I travel? That is how long that arc is. And we can find lengths of arcs just like we can find lengths of line segments. All right. Our first important idea uh, with respect to central angles is our sum of central angles theorem. And you can think of this as being analogous to triangle sum theorem, where we know all of the interior angles in a triangle are going to add up to 180 degrees. Well, we know all of the non-overlapping central angles within a circle are going to add up to 360 degrees. And you might see it written like this. The sum of the measures of the central angles in a circle with no interior points in common is 360 degrees. And that's just a fancy way of saying we're going to add up all these non-overlapping angles. What do I mean by that? Well, what if I had another angle in here that was a reflex angle? That was angle, let's call this angle 4. Okay, an angle, nice big, greater than 180 degree angle. Um, and let's say I had those four angles. Well, obviously I'm not going to add up all four and expect to get 360. I can add up one, two, and three because these are adjacent angles and they will always add up to 360 degrees. Okay, so knowing that, could we solve a problem like this where we need to find the value of x? And hopefully you recognize that AE is a diameter. And that's kind of helpful. Otherwise, it looks like we're missing some information. 
hopefully you had the instinct to maybe add up all the central angles and set them equal to 360. But of course, we're missing the central angle, FCE. Um, but we do have this diameter, AE. And so half of a circle, as you might guess, is going to have a sum of 300, uh, 180 degrees, or 360 divided by 2. So could we add all these up and set them equal to 180? I think we could do that. So let's add up our variable terms. 8x and 9x gives us 17x, and 3x gives us 20x. Plus, let's add up our non-variable terms. 7 plus 7 is 14, minus 2, plus 12. That should equal 180. Good. And let's go ahead and subtract 12 from both sides. I'll get 20x equals 168. And if we divide both sides by 20, we are going to get x equals, what is that? What are we going to get there? x equals 8.4. Good. All right, let's try another one. Uh, this time they want us to find the measure of arc AB. Okay, um, so here's arc AB. And an arc in a circle is going to have the same measure as its central angle. So for instance, I would say that arc ED here, if its central angle measures 40, then the measure of arc ED equals 40 degrees. Okay, so could I use what we know here to find the measure of arc AB. That's what they want us to find. Could we do that? Well, if we knew x, we could do that, couldn't we? How are we going to find x here? Do we recognize FB as a diameter? So hopefully, these three angles will add up to 180 degrees. All right, what do we get here when we add up our, our variable terms? 5x plus 6x gives us 11x. And let's add up our non-variable terms. 15 plus 40 is 55, plus 4 is 59, right? All right, so let's go ahead and solve this for x. Let's subtract 59 from both sides. Okay, and I'm going to get 11x equals, that looks like, 121 degrees. Good, and if I divide both sides by 11, I get what? x equals... 11, right? Okay, so the measure of arc AB should be 4x plus 7. Let's go ahead and plug that in. 4 times 11, so this is going to be 4 times 11 plus 7. So the measure of arc AB is going to be 44 plus 7, 51 degrees. Good. All right, now that we've got a little taste of central angles, and the arcs that they create. Let's talk about arcs and arc measures. Um, let's start with our minor arc. Here we've got an example of a minor arc, which is the shortest arc connecting two endpoints on a circle. So here we would say AC is a minor arc, and that is to distinguish as opposed to this major arc AC that we'd, we would get if we went all the way around. If we're just talking about the measure of arc AC, it's assumed that we are taking the shortest route. So, and your minor arcs are always going to equal the measure of the central angle that's created by connecting its endpoints back to the center of the circle. So the measure of arc AC equals the measure of angle ABC, which equals, in this case, x degrees, your central angle. Now we could take we could take a, a major arc, which would be the longest arc connecting these two points A and C, and we would have to go this way around the circle to do it. So in order to make it unambiguous, we would call this arc ADC. We would define this point D for us to go through to make it clear that we're talking about the major arc. And the measure of a major arc is going to be, it's going to be greater than 180 degrees. And it's going to be basically equal to 360 minus the measure of the minor arc. So if you knew the measure of this minor arc, the, me the measure of the major arc is 360 minus that. It makes sense because all the central angles have to add up to 360. 
So in this case, we would say the measure of arc ABC equals 360 minus the measure of angle ABC, which would equal 360 minus X, the measure of that angle. And the last type of arc we're going to talk about is the semicircle. The semicircle is an arc with endpoints that lie on the diameter of the circle. And the measure of all semicircles are going to be 180 degrees because it is by definition a half of a circle. So we would say here the measure of arc ADC, that's a semicircle, would equal 180 degrees. All right, here we have a five part question. Um, in circle C, is arc BD a major arc, a minor arc, or a semicircle? Let's go ahead and highlight that. Here's arc BD right there. Is that a major arc, a minor arc, or a semicircle? So that's going to be a minor arc. The major arc that connects B and D would be this way, going all the way around the circle. So we're going the shortest distance between B and D. So we are a minor arc. What is the angular measure of this arc BD? Okay, well, hopefully we recognize that AD is a diameter. And since ACB is a right angle, that means that BCD will also be a right angle. They'll be supplementary angles. So that means that the central angle here is 90 degrees. So the measure of arc BD is going to be the same as the measure of its central angle, 90 degrees. Now, part C, they're asking, is arc AED a major arc, minor arc, or a semicircle? Okay, so AED, let's highlight this one. They're talking about AED, okay? And you'll notice that arc AED has its endpoints on a diameter. And so that is going to make it a semicircle. It's exactly half of a circle. So what is the angular measure of arc AED? Okay, well, the measure of a semicircle, the angular measure of a semicircle is 180 degrees, half of an entire circle. So here, could we name a major arc? And we could say that, uh, let's take arc, instead of naming arc AB, which would be a minor arc, could we name arc A? E, B. That would be a major arc. We could name that arc A, E, B. Now you could also name it arc A, D, B. They're the same thing, right? All we want to do is make sure we add that third letter so that it makes it clear that we intend to go this way around the circle and not this way. That brings us to our first circle theorem of the unit, circle theorem 1. And this says that in the same circle or in congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their central angles are congruent. So what that means, if we take this example here, we've got this circle C, and we've got these central angles 1 and 2, and these angles intercept these arcs ED and BA. And what this is saying is that these two uh, arcs are going to be congruent if and only if their central angles are congruent. So if angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, then I could say that arc ED must be congruent to arc BA. And that's how you would mark congruent arcs, just like we mark congruent line segments. Give them two hashes to indicate that these two arcs are congruent. All right. In this problem, the measure of arc AB is 43 degrees. And they're telling us that arc AB is congruent to arc ED. Could we find the measure of angle 1? Well, we should mark these up just like any geometry problem. Mark what you know. The measure of arc AB is 43 degrees. Okay, so this guy's 43 degrees. And they're saying that arc AB is congruent to arc ED. I'll go ahead and mark that. Could we find the measure of angle 1? Okay, how would we do that? Well, what's the measure of this interior, uh, this central angle right here? If its arc is 43 degrees, then this central angle is going to be 43 degrees, right? 
And if these two arcs are congruent, isn't arc ED also going to measure 43 degrees? And if arc ED measures 43 degrees, its central angle should also measure 43 degrees. Now do we have enough information to find angle 1? Should we call it X? And hopefully you'll see that 43 plus 43 plus X should add up to 180 degrees because AE is a diameter. So this whole arc here, ABE, is a semicircle. When we combine our like terms here, we get 86 plus X equals 180. And we can subtract 86 from both sides. And we're going to get X equals 94 degrees. Good. All right, what is Dave up to this time? Dave surveyed his co-workers about their favorite foods and created this pie chart from his data. Could we find the measure of arc AB from this? Okay, so I'm going to just highlight. I guess I'll use green even though it'll blend in. Arc AB, we're looking for this guy right here. Okay, so this is a handy trick to know if you ever have to make a pie chart uh, from data. How, how big do you make your angles? Well, it's all kind of hidden in this problem here. If uh, arc AB represents Italian food here, and that was 31% of the people that he surveyed, well, it makes sense that this should be 31% of the entire circle, right? And the entire circle should be 360 degrees. So could we set up a proportion from that? Could we say that we're looking for the measure of arc AB? Let's call that X. Okay, let's call this X out here. It's the measure of that arc. And isn't it safe to say that X over 360 should equal 31% percent is per 100, right? 31 over 100. Part to the whole should equal part to the whole, right? When we're doing proportions like that. So our cross products here are going to be 100 times x equals 360 times 31. That's a number I'm not doing in my head. 360 times 31 gives me 11,160. Good. And so we can divide both sides by 100. And we're going to find that x equals 111.6 degrees. Okay. Make sense? Notice we are slightly obtuse, so it makes sense that we would be 111.6. And since this arc represents 31 hundredths of a circle, then it makes sense that it should be that proportion, that ratio of degrees x to 360. So that should help you set up your proportion. All right, next idea here is arc addition postulate. Hopefully you guys remember from chapter two, we learned about segment addition postulate, where we could add two segments together. For instance, let's say A, B, and C. And if we knew that A was five and B, B, C was seven, we could add them together and figure out that segment AC must be 12. And then we did the same thing with angles. We did angle addition postulate. We said if we had angles three and four, we could add them together and get the measure of this larger angle, no problem. Well, arc addition postulate works just like that. We can take, if we have these two arcs, ED and DB, we can add them together to get the measure of this larger arc, EDB. And so here we would say that the measure of arc EDB equals the measure of arc ED plus the measure of arc DB, which equals the sum of the measure of their central angles by extension of angle addition postulate. So the measure of angle, this would equal the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two. All right, so using that idea of arc addition postulate, could we find the measure of arc B, C, D? Okay, super. Yeah, it's hard to highlight an arc. There we go. All right, so 
the measure of arc BCD is going to equal the measure of its two central angles. Hopefully you recognize this one's 90 degrees, but this one we don't know what it is. So if we knew what that one was, we could add them together and we'd find the measure of that arc. So how do we find X? Well, hopefully you recognize that 34 plus 90 plus X should equal 180 because AD is a diameter. So these should add up to 180. So 34 plus 90 is 124. And I can subtract 124 from both sides and I get X equals 56 degrees. So if my central angle is 56 degrees, then that means my arc out here is 56 degrees. And if this central angle is 90 degrees, then this arc out here is 90 degrees. So the measure of arc BCD is gonna be the sum of these two arcs. 90 plus 56, which is going to equal 146 degrees. Okay. In the future, maybe you recognize the shortcut there. Maybe you see all that and you say, hold on. Arc BCD is going to be 180 minus 34, which would give me 146 degrees. All right. The last new concept in this lesson is arc length. Now, this is what's really interesting about arcs is there's two ways to measure them. You can measure them with an angular measure, or you can measure them with an actual distance, the actual length along the arc. So far, we've been talking about the angular measure of arcs, but we can also find the lengths of arcs. And similar to our pie chart problem, there's a proportion here that helps us out. The ratio of the length of an arc to the circumference of the circle is equal to the ratio of the angular measure of the arc to 360. This should make sense. L, this, the length of this arc, this is a portion of a circumference. It is a part of a circumference, part to the whole. So the ratio of L over 2 pi r, your circumference, should equal this part to its whole. This is x degrees out of a total of 360 degrees. So we can figure out that the length of any given arc, if we take this and we solve it for L, the length of any given arc is going to be x degrees over 360 times 2 pi r. If you forget, you can just set up the proportion. You can say, all right, L over the circumference should equal x over 360, cross multiply, and crank it out. All right, let's try an example of that. What's this? Well, 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 well. Maybe that'll come in handy. Okay. Here, could we find the length of arc DE? Now, this time, be careful. They're asking for the length, not the angular measure. You can see arc DE, the angular measure, would be equal to its central angle, 70 degrees. But they want to know the length. How long is it? Okay, how am I going to figure that out? Well, let's call this L. And... L over the circumference. This over the circumference should equal 70 over 360. Part to the whole should equal part to the whole. Okay, so L over circumference is 2 pi r should equal 70 over 360. I'm going to go ahead and simplify that straight away and just call it 736. Everybody okay with me just slashing out those zeros? Good. And let's plug in, what do we know about the radius of this circle? Here they're telling us OB is 5 centimeters. Okay, that's our radius. So L over 2 times 5 times pi equals 736. Yes, don't forget, pi is dessert, leave it for last. So we get L over 10 pi equals 7 over 36. Good, what are our cross products going to be? 36 L equals 7 times 10 pi, okay? So we get 36L equals 70 pi, and I can go ahead and divide both sides by 36 to get L equals 70 over 36 pi. And if you must know, if it's important to know some length so that you can picture what it is or lay it out or measure it, we can do 70 divided by 36 times pi, and we get approximately 
6.1. What are my units going to be? Bring them along for the ride. 6.1 centimeters. Good. Let's go ahead and try one last problem like that here. Could we find the length of arc EB? Okay, read these carefully because they're trying to they got a little bit of a twist here. Arc EB. Okay, that's what they want. Okay, well, what's the measure of the central angle of arc EB? It's going to be 180 minus 38 because DB is a diameter, right? So 180 minus 38 is going to give me 142 degrees. Okay, now I can set up my proportion. If I call the length of arc EBL, then I know L over the circumference, what's that, 2 pi r? L over 2 pi r is going to equal 142 degrees over 360. Part to the whole equals part to the whole. Good. And if you want, you could you could reduce that. You could divide both top and bottom by 2. If you wanted, you could say L over. Why don't we, while we're plugging this in, we'll, we'll slowly sl simplify the right side as well. L e over 2 times pi times my radius is 9 centimeters. It's going to equal 71 over 180. I just divided both top and bottom by 2. So we get L over 2 times 9 is 18 pi. Okay, equals 71 over 180. Good. What are my cross products going to be? 180 L equals, let's go ahead and multiply, what is 71 times 18? 1,278 pi. Okay, and I can go ahead and divide both sides by 180 to solve for L. And I'll get L equals, go ahead and say 1278 divided by 180, which is 7.1 pi, which is approximately, if you're going to crank that out, approximately 22.3. What are my units here? Centimeters. Bring those along for the ride. Good. So the length of our arc is exactly 7.1 pi, which is approximately 22.3 centimeters. And you can kind of picture this. If that's 9 centimeters, this looks like it is slightly more than twice as long, about, about 22.3 centimeters. Good. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that and found it helpful. Good luck on the homework.